we're gonna do Southwest chicken chili. Now, you can do this with beef if you want. We are a chicken chili kind of family. We really don't eat that much ground beef unless it's a burger. So feel free to substitute that into the recipe if you want beef over chicken. Let me tell you what we got here. So, we're gonna do a mix of white and red beans. Most important is our seasoning mix. Cumin, smoked chipotle, paprika, smoked paprika, adobo, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and bay leaf. Put the bay leaves over there, that's why I can't think of it right now in here. And we're gonna obviously add fresh cilantro. Um, my big key ingredient is gonna be the Rotel tomatoes. Now I use these most of the time to make our fresh salsa that I do in the blender, but this is what's gonna be the game changer to really bring out amazing Southwest flavors in this. I'm using ground chicken breast. We got shallot, garlic, and onion. And then we're gonna use this corn with the whole seasoning packet in here from Trader Joe's at the end. And I'm excited. Let's go. Did I mention this is gonna be in the crock pot so we're gonna make your life even freaking easier and you can do this before you go to work. Leave it in the crock pot and ready to go. I did wanna show you this. I love Trader Joe's. They have some great, amazing things that can help with dinner any night of the week. But this is what I love about it. So it's roasted corn, but it has these little nuggets in it. And this is like a chipotle sauce that they throw. So when it cooks and it thaws out, it has like an, its own extra seasoning and sauce right in there. Um, I'm gonna start moving this over the crock pot. First thing we gotta do, we gotta brown our meat. So the big ass skillet's on the stove and we're gonna get it browning. And oh, we gotta cut up our shallots, garlic, and onion. I'm doing a small dice on everything. I'm gonna go thin slice with the garlic. So a little while I cut our onion up and our shallots, a little uh, lesson here about Southwest chicken chili. It's much more Tex-Mex than it is actual Mexican. Um, I think chili, which, you know, chiles is where it came, slow cooking meat with certain chilies for certain flavors, definitely came from the Mexican origin. But down in Texas and Arizona and Southern California, that Tex-Mex flavor, that Americanized flavor kind of came into play and we then became Tex-Mex, what you kind of call your fast food Mexican and more gringo Mexican food. Um, but we're not gonna make it super, super spicy just because my family really doesn't like super, super spicy. But that doesn't mean, because it's not spicy, that there isn't a boatload of flavor in it. I'm gonna show you how to bring the flavor. No matter what the meat is that's going in my crock pot, I always brown it. I think that if you don't, it ends up being mushy in your crock pot. And you know that means we're using our favorite thing, the meat spoon. So I have had it sit here for a little bit. I'm gonna start cutting it up with the meat spoon and turning it so that every single part cooks really well. So in essence, it's all going in pretty cooked because I'm gonna saute my garlic and onions in here too. It's just that long, slow cooking method that marries all the flavors together. So I've learned my lesson because I've done this before. Um, it gets a little tight in the crock pot to really coat your meat well with all the seasoning. So right now my ground meat was pretty much there. So I added my seasonings. Um, and I am gonna add one more thing that I didn't add in the original. We're gonna add a little sazon uh, from Goya. It's a great seasoning. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit to here and then we're gonna get this in the crock pot. But at least we can get it all coated really well this way. Before we clean our pan, added oil so we could saute our garlic, our shallots, and our onion up and get all the flavor that was left in the pan while we let these caramelize a little bit. Then we'll add this to our crock pot. The crock pot has our sauteed garlic, onion, shallots, our ground beef, our seasoning, we're adding in our Rotel. I do an original, I do a Chipotle, and I do a mild. The reason I do that is so you get all three different flavors. And then we add in our corn. Now the only thing I am not adding in is our beans because this needs to cook for a while. And if I add in our beans right now, it will get really mushy. So, gonna stir it. Get the crock pot top on. So this has been on for hours. I'm just gonna open it. It's at a beautiful, nice simmer. And give this a stir, and now it's finally time. Look how nice that all came together. To add in our beans, I do a mix of white and red. 
You do not have to use plain red if you like black. I even like chickpea sometimes, but since we're keeping with that Southwest feel, I went with red and white beans. Gonna stir this up, give it around 20 more minutes, and then serve it up with all the toppings. You know it. Seriously, people, look at this chili. No other way to eat it than this way. And that is with pico de gallo, shredded cheese, sour cream, a little taco sauce, <clears throat> fresh cilantro, and you break in. I'm doing this one-handed, okay? Chow down. I'm literally laying on the counter. Oh my God, it's so good. Um, whew. For me, it has a little kick because I use the chipotle peppers. Um, what needs to happen though, is I need to order, open up a bag of tortilla chips and just shovel. This is gonna be amazing on my nachos. You can eat it in a chili bowl or rice or nachos. I think I'm gonna do it all. Enjoy.